Hello, I stand before you today as a wife, mother, and grandmother. My name is Delinda Delgado Morgan, and I am running for Oregon's first congressional district. As in 2012, my values have not changed. I still want to repeal Obamacare, reform the tax code, and create quality jobs in a strong economy. I continue to stand for states' rights and will protect your Second Amendment rights and the right to life given to you by God. I met with local businessmen in my rural community. Larry, a local logger, talked about federal government intrusion in our lives and said, we need a properly educated government, not regulation. He is ex exceeding reforestation from 200 trees per acre to over 400 trees per acre with two or three harvests and everything is used. Rules are being implemented by government employees who do not understand good conservation and have never worked in the logging industry. They need to be educated in the industry before they can effectively legislate it. I am not naive to think that the important issues of health care, taxes, and jobs are unique to Oregon. I know there are some good representatives in D.C. that have similar ideas and complaints. Right now, our Congress is dysfunctional, which I may not be able to change overnight, but I have a track record of getting to the table and achieving results. As a vice president for a construction corporation, we negotiated numerous contracts. I was able to bring people of diverse opinions together and produce quality outcomes. For four straight years, our corporation was awarded Contractor of the Year, and we received that award personally from President Ronald Reagan in 1984. My record makes me your best choice for accomplishing our goals in Congress. What are you hearing out there? You've been driving from one part of the state to the other. What are people saying that is of concern to them? Jobs. Jobs seem to be the number one issue out there. Um, there are, the Affordable Care Act is an issue, but they, they're more concerned about being able to put, right now, food on the table. And they, they hear these numbers, oh, the unemployment rate is 6.3%, and they're going, where? Mm -hmm. Slap in the face for those who are unemployed. Right, and 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 we know those numbers are they're they're not accurate numbers. No, you can make not. a number say anything you wanted to say. Mm -hmm. um, and in Oregon, we have such amazing natural resources that we could use. One of the things that I've been saying in our Constitution is very clear: what land the federal government can own. Ten square miles plus yeah. plus land for military bases and other needful buildings that they purchase the land and the buildings, then why does the federal government own 53% of Oregon? Yeah. Get that land back to the state, let, let us here in the state decide how much should be owned by the state, how much should be owned by the people. That will open up jobs automatically. Yes, I was actually contacted by a man named Tom Mason who used to be a legislator in Oregon and now is the NRA's uh, Director of International Affairs. You know, mm -hmm. He watches the, the proposed UN uh, treaties and those kinds of things. And he called and talked to me for about a half an hour after a, a number of people sent the newsletter to him. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, this is, this is really a good idea because it doesn't cost anything. And um, the NRA's position, official position is have an armed police officer in every school, which as I said, it, 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 mm -hmm. it's not feasible. Mm -hmm. it, it's not affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, are, are you getting any traction here at the Capitol with this? Uh, really? Not really. You know, the same group of people supporting most any other pro Second uh -huh. Amendment things, I'm sure, would be in support. Uh -huh. And then so the, you have the, the usual characters of, who aren't. <laughs> so yeah, the majority of the Democrats that don't mm. like anything you come up with, um, typically. And then you know, there, there's a surprising number of Democrats who mm -hmm. do support the Second Amendment. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Those are kind of more the blue collar well, traditional non, non type. Urban. Of, yeah, usually not, not more rural. Urban they're normally right. not the Portland. Yeah. No, not okay. the Portland people. <laughs> why, why is it that, you know, as I said in my introduction, you get people like Obama, but, but other um, Democrats and also uh, Republicans that aren't true Republicans, they, they put their hand on the Bible, they swear to uphold the Constitution, and then all their bills are, like, totally against it, <laughs> you know. I mean, it seems to be, you know, from my um, point of view is, like, everything mm -hmm. is anti-constitutional. It's, it, it's How can easy they do that? to make things black and white. Uh-huh. I, you know, it was easier when I was 25 because everything was just either one way or the other. But mm -hmm. 
having been in the legislature now, at least as far as I'm concerned, um, I'm less likely to judge other people's motives mm -hmm. because they believe that what they're doing is right. Is right. Mm -hmm. They'll say, well, the Constitution is a living, a living document, uh -huh. and that when you had muskets, that's one thing, but when you got you know, AR-15s and, and large clips, and you know, yeah. we, we regulate machine guns, why mm -hmm. shouldn't we regulate others? And so they have an argument. Mm -hmm. But so far, they don't have a majority mm -hmm. in both houses. That's good. And that's really a dangerous argument because what I saw in the Obama administration was I saw him um, go after almost every amendment, you know, and, and, and tr truly I don't know, except the First and Second Amendment. And then he got reelected, now he's going after the second, and then he's going to go after the first after he gets rid of the second. And um, pretty soon, we're going to be, um, we're not going to be the United States of America. I mean, it feels like we're barely that way now, um, divided States of America. <laughs> well, just watch out for a term, I think it's Civilian National Security Corps. Oh, uh, yes. he was. He mentioned that before, uh, after it was published, his remarks, that sentence or two mm -hmm. that we talked about it was deleted, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the, the in Germany in the 30s, uh -huh. they had the brown shirts, yeah. and if we see any movement to have civilians be armed, to, to be watching out against other civilians, uh -huh. we ought to be aware that that's been done before and it didn't wow. lead to any good. Okay, so, <laughs> so you're a right-winger, like I am. And like Representative Thatcher is. Okay, so um, because we only have a few minutes left, actually, if you can believe it. Um, it's not as long as your show. I don't go three hours. <laughs> You'd be amazed how fast it goes, <laughs> yeah. just like this. Okay, so life, um, Second Amendment, uh, well, First Amendment. Um, where, where do you stand on some of these big issues? Um, Obamacare. Well, first of all, I like all the amendments. I like the whole Constitution. The you US like the Constitution entire Constitution? And the okay. Oregon Constitution. Okay, so when and you swear to protect the Second Amendment, you're actually going to uh, mean yeah, it. The whole thing. Okay. Here, here I'll, real quick, the Oregon Constitution, because this is a hot-button issue, uh -huh. and that's marriage, the marriage issue. Yeah. People have asked me, where do you stand on this, this marriage issue, the gay marriage issue? Here's where I stand. In 2004, the, Oregonian, the, the people of Oregon, by about a 17-point margin, if I remember right, passed Measure 36, which defined marriage as between one man and one woman. It's mm -hmm. an amendment to the Oregon Constitution. I take the Constitution very seriously. That's an amendment. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with love, hate, or anything else. It's an amendment to the Constitution by the people of Oregon. Mm -hmm. Now, if a guy in a robe down in Eugene decides to overturn that, I'm going to be very upset. Yeah. Now, what you can do in the legislature, I don't know. So I hope that tells you a little bit about my feelings. I get a little passionate, as you can tell. Yeah. I'm a little fired yeah. up. Okay, life. Oh, absolutely. I'm endorsed by Oregon Right to Life. I'm the only candidate running right now in this district that's endorsed by Oregon Right to Life. Okay. I'm very pro-life. Life begins at conception. Okay. How about the First Amendment? You're a radio guy. You uh, no. like your free speech? Absolutely, but also the freedom of religion, not freedom from religion, yeah, not yeah. freedom to separate me. There is no separation of church and state. It's there's, not in yeah, there. There's that little prepositional word. Thank you for saying that. You know what, I even get guests that are completely right wing and sometimes they'll just throw out, you know, separation of church and state and it's, it's just like, there. hey, wait, 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 it's not there. Danbury Baptist Church, Thomas Jefferson, go read your history, 1804. Hmm. I really feel though that we have in our county and just outside of the county, a lot of resources that are not being utilized effectively. And when I say uh, resources, I'm talking about timber that is now sitting on BLM land and U.S. Forest Service land that uh, since the spotted owl crisis years yeah. ago, a lot of that timber was taken out of production. And I am not against uh, setting timber aside for, you know, for recreational use uh, I, I think we should do that. Uh -huh. I think we need to really look at making everyone happy. And um, we have people in our uh, in Congress right now that have been working on this and working on this on this issue endlessly. And yet here we still sit. And I w I've been up in the woods looking at some of these tracks of timber. And a lot of the timber that sits on these tracks is getting to the place where it's almost too big for the mills in our area to run. Um, we got another great candidate here. Stan, you're running for position one. Yes, and, I am. And Mary is running for position three, just so, so people we're don't not, get confused. It's no. very confusing, but we're mm -hmm. running for two separate seats yeah. on the county right. commission. Yeah. So. so right here on studio, we have position one, position That's three. Right. That's right. And um, one or both of you, hopefully both of you, um, or Bill, <laughs> will join um, 
Alan, Alan Springer. Alan Springer, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we'll have the three again. So from your lips to God's God's ears. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, let's pray. <laughs> yeah. We have been, believe me, we have yeah. been mightily praying throughout this. We have a lot of time doing that. Mm -hmm. Every morning we say, okay, God, where do you want us to go today? Mm -hmm. And that's where we go. So. It's uh, the race is his, and uh, we all know that. And uh, it's a lot of times we get caught up in wondering, what am I doing wrong, or what should I? Okay, God, I need a message, and yeah. He's been so great about giving me that message and telling me where to go. And yeah. uh, so it's been it's been a really interesting uh, time. Uh, the whole process, uh, going out and and doing the uh, filing by petition, mm -hmm. was so interesting, and getting to know so many of the uh, uh, residents around the county that I hadn't ever had an opportunity to meet uh, has been a very, very fulfilling uh, task. And uh, I've enjoyed that. Uh, I've learned so much about what people think the county government does. And there's a lot of misinformation out there, unfortunately. Oh, right. and, uh, people yeah. aren't apathetic. They're just uninformed. Mm -hmm. And they are, and they're, they're becoming, because of politicians and we don't need politicians we need people who really are focused on helping the constituents that put them in office and they become uh, kind of uh, jaded a little bit they just think I, I don't make a difference why even bother uh, no matter who we vote for they're gonna go in there and and do whatever is best for them they don't yeah. care about me and so I want the voters to know that I'm here I've, I've been in Yamhill County for 31 years uh, I am a financial planner. I've been working hard at that for 31 years. It gives me a great appreciation for other people's money mm -hmm. and seeing to it that it's properly managed. And uh, we've been very fortunate in Yamhill County that we've had some real good fiscal conservative mm -hmm. people uh, running our county. And our county is by far and away uh, better off than almost any other county in the state, especially our surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a vibrant uh, economy going here. Uh, and that's what we need to grow on. Mm -hmm. Because we are such a, a positive county, we have a lot of people coming here who need services. We won't be able to provide those services for people if we don't create some jobs and build our tax base. We can't continue to tax and create fees for the people who are already here working as hard as they can to take care of their families. Uh, we need to broaden that base of taxpayers. So economic mm -hmm. development is critical. Uh, public safety, that's what government's about. That's mm -hmm. what we were founded to come together and protect one another. So we need to really get back to our basics, yep. and our candidates, our, our government officials, need to be focused on what can I do for the people who put me here to see to it that their lives are better.